Well, thank you so much for coming, uh, Your Excellency, fathers, sisters, and all friends. Uh, we come, I want to go to my first slide. Oh, no, not that. Uh, Sister Lucy Truth, that's the organization I established last year to investigate the life and identity of Sister Lucia dos Santos, the famous seer of Fatima. And it started with a suspicion that became more and more certain until now I believe that we have proven it scientifically. And it's very hard to say, it's very hard to present that first slide, Sister Lucy Truth, fraud in Fatima. Because I'm afraid to say that we are looking, when we focus on the life of Sister Lucy of Fatima, that a great fraud, one that surely shakes the heavens, has been perpetrated on the world and on the Catholic peoples, not to mention on dear Sister Lucy herself. So what I intend to present today, and I finished, we, my friends and I, we finished this presentation at 12.01 this morning. Uh, at, <laughs> he, he, he was up with me, so, but it's the divine maternity of Our Lady, a perfect day in which to set the record straight. And I want to thank you so much for inviting me here because I've never presented this material in the public forum publicly before. It's on the internet now, or some of it. I have some new material that I'm going to release for the first time to you here today. But I've never presented this material in public before. So I thank you for the opportunity of having me. First of all, you're going to have to submit to a little experiment, okay? So you're just going to look at some pictures because all the, we consulted so many, dozens and dozens of scientific experts, investigative experts, and many, many say that the human eye is a better judge of things than the most advanced computers. And I think you'll see why that is true, even though we're going to bring forward the math to show you that this fraud has been perpetrated on us. But we're just going to have a little experiment, okay? I want you to really look. Look at the faces being presented. Look at the mouth. Look at the chin. Look at the eyebrows. Look at the phylum. You know what the phylum is? Phylum is it's the little part between the nose and the lips. Uh, everything matters in this regard. So look at all the aspects of the faces that I present to you, and then I want you to react. When there's something wrong, I want you to raise your hand, okay? But don't, I mean, just respond as you see fit, according to your judgment. Okay. Here's age 10. The famous picture of the three children of Fatima. Of course, Jacinta, Lucia, and Francisco. Uh, about the age of 13. Look at the face. We're going to have a close-up of that face. As you can see, a very strong figure, a very strong face, a, str a face that has already known adversity. 
There's a certain aura about it. When entering the Dorothean nuns, beautiful this is moving isn't it member of the Dorothean order one of the few pr oh. uh oh well it's two pictures uh, one of the few profiles that we have of Sister Lucy. She's a Dorothean nun, and you can see her profile. Notice the chin, the lips, the nose, the forehead. Sister Lucy, again, a very famous picture as a Dorothean. Now, you're going to be tested, okay, you're going to be tested, which is, you see, that, just look, just look, you got to look first. If we don't see it, we're not going to believe it. Where's, which one is Sister Lucy? Is this Sister Lucy? Is this Sister Lucy? Yes. Okay. 100. Again. Notice the ambiance of the woman. And here's a beautiful picture. Beautiful picture. Beautiful picture. It looks almost at play. She looks like she's posing in some rocks that are all opened up and cragged and here's here's when she joins the Carmelites 1946 Carmelites Wait, what? Wait a minute. I meant I spent all that money on something that's obvious. Wait. <laughs> Check it out again. What year is this picture? Uh, this one's 1967. Is she, we, we have no pictures of her from the early 50s until, this is 1967, May 13th, when she met with Paul VI at Fatima. Okay? Now go back. This is, now I'm going to give you the dates. This is 1947. This is 1947. Dorothean. This is 1967. Carmelite. Uh, 60 years old. Okay. Well, we're going to, just my own, my own interest. Are we dealing with the same person who says yes? Who says no? no? Okay. This is a picture. This is in, it's almost like a Carmelite yearbook. This is a picture of Sister Lucy that's going to appear. You're going to see it over and over and over and over again. Same look. Same smile, same attitude. 1967. Anyone see a problem so far? Next, some comparison photos. 
Oh, wait, wait, okay, wait. I got it here, but I don't got it there. Okay, 1946. 1967. Look. Doctor, can I give you a wireless mic? You can't hear, they can't hear me? Oh, can really? Click this onto your belt. Okay. Click that onto your belt. Wow. Well, can I just grab the microphone? Can I just grab the microphone? You can, but you're doing a lot of walking around. Like I'll, can I just grab the microphone? You yeah, want to do this? I'm just going to hinder me. Uh, okay. Well, this gives you more freedom. Okay. Too much walking around. Um, okay, here we go. 1946, 1967. So we're dealing with a 20 year gap. Does she look 20 years after her? Another one. 1946. 1967. Name one feature that you see as different. Name one feature. Teeth. Jaw, chin. You see the dimple in the chin of the 1946? Right above the, below the lower lip and there's nothing there. Eyebrows, yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, you're, you're passing your test here, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, 1946, 1967. Here's a profile. And of what do you think? Oh, you can't see it. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to, you can't see it that well, but her, well, let me just say this. Her chin is out to here. It's out onto the curtain. As compared to this, you see the difference? So, I mean, maybe the curtain helps us a bit. Uh, Here's the nose. Here's the nose. Look at the nose as compared to the chin. Here's the nose, and here's the chin. This is a profile view. Okay. See a problem? Okay. So it was based on that problem, the apparent difference between these pictures and between what seems like two different women that caused us to begin this investigation. And what, I, what we've done is put the case, we were, we're going to prove fraud here. And what we've done is put all the evidence in three separate categories. One is the historical, one is the photographic. So if a fraud of this magnitude occurred, then clear inconsistencies, anomalies, and perhaps even a warning from heaven should exist. You think there's going to be a warning from heaven? There is. There is. Photographic, Sister Lucy Truth, the organization we have, accumulated over 100 photographs of Sister Lucia from 1917 to 2005 and submitted them to unbiased experts of various specialties, really those who are on the top of their professions. Because we wanted the best and we wanted a, because it was so serious, we wanted an objective analysis. Then, for a looking at another scale of value and looking for another indicator, we had a handwriting analyst. Sister Lucy Truth obtained hundreds of pages of authentic writing from the real Sister Lucia. 
an extremely rare, one of those was an extremely rare and high quality copy of the third secret of Fatima published by the Vatican. Four writing specimens dated post-1967 and a total of 20 authentic signatures prior to 1967 and two question signatures post-1967. These specimens were examined over the course of six months. It took a long time to get this in. Okay, so what I'm doing for you today is I'm presenting to you the evidence as we have it now. We have never produced put forward this much evidence before to any audience or on the internet. So here we go. First, we're going to look at the historical element of this, this situation. What do we say? Why do we care? Why do we care about the identity of this, this woman, Sister Lucy of Fatima, I know I don't have to say that to you, but objectively speaking, why do we need to care? The identity of Sister Lucy is tied up with the history of the Fatima apparitions. The largest public miracle in human history, the miracle of the Son, subsequent to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The elements culminating, the events culminating in 1960 and thereafter demand a reasonable explanation and renewed examination. Now look at this. I'm, you will appreciate this because it's amazing what we found. It seems to be the case that, that the transition from the real Sister Lucia to the, sister, to the new sister, Lucia, quote-unquote. How many things in our age have to be quote-unquote? Exactly parallels the transition from the traditional Catholic faith to the new faith of post-Vatican II. The historical evidence. Okay. I, I mentioned to you about a warning from heaven. And I just found this last week in a, in a text called Fatima and Twilight. It mentions the fact that on her deathbed, so remember Jacinta, Francisco had already died in 1919 from the Spanish flu. Now, Jacinta is going to come down with it, and she is going to die the next year, 1920. But before she dies, before she dies, she has a message. Our Lady appears to her when she is on her deathbed, and she con and conveys to Jacinta a message, and mess uh, Jacinta is going to convey that message to Lucia, the message was a warning of the grave dangers that threatened Lucy, both at that time and in the future. The priest who was in charge of the area of Fatima immediately, he heard this from Jacinta, he immediately tried to get both seers out of Fatima. Of course, Jacinta was ill, so he took, he took uh, Lucia to Lisbon to protect her life. He was going to put her in a school in Lisbon. He was going to have her have a new identity, a new name. And she was never to speak about Fatima. Well, the government of Portugal, the Masonic government of Portugal, found out where Lucia was. 
So they had to take her again and go back to Fatima. But, her, but she was always under threat. In 1921, she goes to, they bring her to a Dorothean school in Porto, Portugal, run by the, Dor- the Sisters of St. Dorothy. And she was instructed, she was given a new name, Maria das Doris, Mary of Sorrows, and they, they forbade her at the school from ever talking about Fatima. In fact, later, she's going to do- join herself the Dorothean sisters. And during that whole time, only once was she given permission to speak about Fatima when they were doing an official study of the apparition. So otherwise she was to maintain silence. So much happened to her as a Dorothean. I focus for, the mo- for one moment on the apparition that she received at Tui, Spain. When the Holy Trinity appeared to her, she was shown the graces and efficacy of the Mass And she was also shown Our Lady who held her immaculate heart in her hand at the foot of the cross. It was during this apparition that Our Lady came as she promised on July 13th, 1917. Our Lady came to her and asked for the consecration of Russia to her immaculate heart. So, so many things happened to Sister Lucy Dos Santos of Fatima when she was a Dorothean nun. And you see her habit there. Okay, Lucia does return to Fatima in 1946. And within a few months, she indicates her long-held desire to become a Carmelite. She's going to leave the Dorothean order after over 20 years and she's going to need permission to go to the Carmelites. Well, strangely enough, that's just the facts. The request is approved by the intervention of Monsignor Giovanni Battista Montini. He signs off on the papers for this, for this transfer. She would go to the Carmel at Coimbra in Portugal. Of course, during this time, there was all talk about this third secret coming out before 1960. Everyone was talking about it. The Cardinal from Portugal, uh, Cardinal Ottaviani, Everyone was looking to that date, 1960. Now, look at this date, December 26, 1957. In this, you have what I believe is the last interview with the real Sister Lucy. It's an interview given to Father Fuentes, who is there as postulator for the cause of the beatification of Jacinta and Francisco. All right? Then look at that. After this interview, Sister Lucy was not allowed to be interviewed anymore for the next several decades. The interview was not published, so she gave the interview, he left, and he went back to Mexico. He was Mexican. The interview was not published until May 1958. But then he gave a conference. Father Fuentes gave a conference in 1958. And first of all, he described the Sister Lucy that he met uh, a few months before. Look what he says. He said, describe Sister Lucy's appearance as very sad, pale, and drawn. 
Now, this is, so that's the way she appeared to, she appeared. She told, what did she tell Father Fuentes? She told him the chastisement from heaven is imminent. This is December 26th, 1957. The chastisement from heaven is imminent. The year 1960 is on us. And then what will happen? It will be very sad for everyone and far from a happy thing if the world does not pray and do penance before then. All right, that sounds, who thinks that sounds like Sister Lucy? Seems like it sounds like Sister Lucy, the one that we know. Notice, something, now things, so it sounds like Sister Lucy. He's, uh, he has a reason to be there. S it sounds like Sister Lucy. Seems like Sister Lucy. Perfect. But then seems like strange things go on. The interview's published in 1958. Then, in 1959, the Diocese of Coimbra, on July 2nd, 1959, released a disconcerting note publicly disavowing Father Fuentes along with the following words of correction supposedly coming from Sister Lucy about Father Fuentes. This is what she's supposed to say. I know nothing and could therefore say nothing about such punishments which are falsely attributed to me. This note issued by the diocese, ends with the following line. The note closes with these words. Sister Lucy has nothing more to say on Fatima. What happened? What, why, all, why is it getting strange all of a sudden? It's 1959. Why is it all getting so strange? Here are the events that happened 1958 to 1959 and then into the 60s. I'm just going to run through them because I think they matter. This is a transitional year. So, and what happens in the church is going to affect Sister Lucy and what happens to her. Surely, number one, October 9th, 1958, Pope Pius XII dies. On October 26th, 1958, in the conclave, on that day there were two releases of smoke. In the first release, when they're burning the ballots after two ballots, there was what, at the conclave, of course, uh, white smoke initially went up the pipe, but then black smoke gushed out. Then, in the evening, the second burning of the ballots on this day, white smoke emerges, for, and it enlivens the crowd, and, ex and it indicates to the Vatican radio and the announcers that a pope has been chosen for five minutes, smoke, white smoke went up the chimney at this, from the Sistine Chapel. Well, as we know, nobody came out on the balcony that day. They're supposed to come out after 20 minutes. Nobody comes out. What happens? Then, later in the evening, they announced there was a mistake. October 27th, 1958, a pen penumbral lunar eclipse appeared over Rome from 5.13 p.m. to 6.36. If you think back to Our Lady of La Salette, 
the church will be in eclipse. Maybe it's just odd. Then, on October 28, 1958, Angelo Roncalli appears on the balcony as John the 23rd. Um, this concerns us, this critical move, and we're going to follow up on it because we want to know what happened in that conclave of 1958. We want to know. And who would know? Who would be spying on that conclave? The U.S. government. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. So we want to get the declassified documents concerning that conclave. What happened? Because clearly it was the turning point for Sister Lucy, as we will see. Okay, this is a little, look at that date. Doesn't it give you chills? October 11th, 1958. We got two class of declassified documents from the State Department already. And they tell us, Look at it's dated October 11, 2 p.m., uh, 1958. It's from the um, American ambassador to Italy to the Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles. And it says, so this is a confidential, extremely secret communique, uh, communication. It says this. This is before, October 11th. So this is right after Pius XII dies. During conversation with embassy officer, Vatican source expressed personal view. Next pope will be elected outside conclave by agreement between cardinals. So a little interesting. Then gets really interesting. Zellerbach is the American ambassador to Italy at the time, a Jewish man. He says this, just fill in Cardinal at the beginning. Cardinal Siri, Ruffini, Ottaviani would be misfortune for church since these three cardinals have an unrealistic approach to great problems facing the world today. Source said election of any one of these three could depend on the influence of American cardinals and volunteered suggestion U.S. authorities would do well to exercise discreetly their own influence on certain American cardinals. They want to get their hands in there. Because, who are these guys? These are the, these are the traditionalists, electors. Siri, Ruffini, Ottaviani. Now John XXIII is elected, and this is, we, we, don't, we don't know much yet. This is another declassified document that we've received. And it says, just look at number two. I have noted with some humor that this is after John the 23rd is elected and the ambassador's writing to the Secretary of State. I have noted with some humor that the new pope is captioned in the various magazine articles about papal candidates as non-political. I have never met a more politically aware individual. While more than 10 years of service as a papal legate and Nuncio seemed to me rather political. So he's talking about John the 23rd. And then John the 23rd's elected, and look what happens. Think about what's happening to Sister Lucy. Already her message is getting changed. January 25th, 1959, John the 23rd calls for the Second Vatican Council as one of his first acts. February 1960, the Portuguese news agency in Rome released a statement. And I know my mother told me about this, you know, right? You remember, okay. Uh, 
the Portuguese New in Rome released a statement received anonymously from Vatican sources saying, it is most probable that the secret of Fatima will remain forever under absolute seal. This is, remember, the secret was supposed to be revealed by 1960. And you ask yourself this, would Sister Lucy, if she had this mandate from Our Lady, would she allow this? 